If you're using Blender for product photography and you just can't seem to nail that professional lighting, chances are that you're not using a powerful technique that product photographers use. What is that? Gradient lighting. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to properly use this technique to transform your renders from amateur to pro. Let me show you. All right, in my 3D scene, here you see the Sony 90mm macro lens, one of the best lens for product photography. Now we're going to light this. I've already set up my scene for more efficiency. So to the left hand side, I've split this window and I've turned off uh, the overlays and the gizmos. This is where we're going to view the object and this is where we're going to move about uh, the lights, etc. I've also switched the render engine. Sorry, the render engine to cycle, and I've switched to view the render preview. Uh, the reason it's black, although the camera is enabled, is because I've turned the world uh, strength to zero. Yours may be set to one by default, and that's what it will look like, but that is not what we want. We want to start from a completely black scene and add lights one at a time. So any lights that are in the scene are what we deliberately added. All right, so let's press Shift A. And instead of adding a light from the default menu, let's add a mesh plane. Now we're going to add an emission material to this plane. So let's scale it up a bit. I press S and 5, enter. And let's rotate this along the X axis, RX 90, enter. Let's pull it back just a bit. Uh, not too far and not too close, just about there. All right. Now, since we're going to add a material and we want to see, and the material we're going to add is a gradient material, we want to see what is happening here. So let's switch this to material preview and drag this window up. So we're going to add the material here. Yours may be set to timeline by default. So just click this button and change it to the shader editor. All right. What you typically do is to click new and add a new material. But I've already added this uh, gradient material. I'm calling it the common gradient. You'll understand why uh, just a bit. All right. We're not able to see what's happening here because the plane is blocking the lens. Uh, so to avoid that, let me press zero to enable the camera view once again. And to change that with the plane selected, uh, click on object properties, scroll along the visibility and turn off the ray visibility of the camera. So now we should see what's happening there. And really nice, but you might not be seeing clearly. Now let me bring this plane down just a bit. And you could see a really nice gradient, professional looking uh, light. We're starting to get somewhere. Oh, I moved it by accident. Let me press zero, right. Now we're starting to get somewhere. All right, what if I want two gradients here? Not just this one on the top here. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Here, I've pulled up a reference on, from Sony's website. And what you will observe, the same 90 millimeter lens, right? Uh, two gradients here, one to the top and one to the bottom. The, the reason for this, actually, there are more than one reason. Uh, one, you add gradients to show that there's curvature, that this is a 3D object, it's a cylindrical. So that's why there's this gradient here and here. And also, of course, for stylish reasons, because it, it, it looks really professional. Now, we're going to add this to our lens. And what we usually have to do, let me pull this back up to the top here. We'll usually have to press Shift D to duplicate the plane, uh, pull this down a bit, and then maybe rotate it on the X and move it across here. Uh, you know what? Uh, and that, that may work. It looks okay. Uh, but what happens now when we have to add more planes and move them about more it starts to get a little bit more cumbersome so let's undo that let's undo that all right and let's remove this common gradient uh, we're going to use uh, a node group that i created uh, so that we could uh, get some more uh, control over our gradients all right so i've named it the ultimate a hey. oh i do have to create a new material first create a new material delete this and then press shift A and enter my ultimate strip box. Now I'm going to explain what this means. Let me pull this up more. All right. Now under the hood here, I created this simply so that I could have more control. I am by no means any node width, but as they say, uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. This is how this was born. All right. We will need an, a texture coordinate. I think I have this as a shortcut. Yeah, texture coordinate. If you want to have shortcuts, for example, you could find texture coordinate and input and texture coordinate. Just right click 
and click on add to favorites mine says remove because i've already added it all right so i'm gonna uh, connect the generated to the vector which is how i set it up to work and let's let, let's let's let understand what these mean so let's try it out this double x what is that let's plug this into the surface all right so we see something this black strip going down the center this is this is really the gradient of course it's a hard line but it's adjustable which is why i i, I named it fall off that's what happens here but now we don't want this to go up and down we want it horizontal that is the point of the double y uh, let's plug this here instead ah, and now we have this gradient so to speak going across here uh, let's increase the light intensity let's switch it to like five all right and let's move it back up to where the plane was before so this is where the, what it will be by default as well so you won't have to move the plane at all all right and let's increase this gradient width using this slider i'm holding shift for finer control all right so i could use increase the gradient width I can increase the fall off. Now, just now I did not have to move the plane because this is what this double gradient slide is all about. So I could hold in shift again. I could slide this gradient up and down. And you see, I have much more control and flexibility using this ultimate strip box. What is this a single Y? Well, you, you get the idea by now that the Y is, is, is going, the gradient is going left to right. Uh, the single Y would be the, the opposite of that on this side. And if I want it flipped where I want the gradient to be on the top, well, then I, I switch it to the single X flip and so on and so on. You get the point. Uh, why, why is all this uh, necessary? Well, what if this object will stand in vertically? So instead of having to uh, rotate uh, the gradient and so on, you could just simply use, you just switch between these and you have the, the, a vertical one vertical gradient and this is if you want the two sides to be emitting light that's why you use the double but if you just want the uh, this one side emitting light you use a single and you could of course um, slide uh, sorry adjust the the width in this case it wouldn't slide because it only slides when there are two when there are two 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 sides of emission so then the gradient will slide. All right, that's the purpose of this, this slider for the gradient. But if it's a, if it's just a single, then this the, it 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 wouldn't slide. Uh, it will it will, we will just adjust the the width of the gradient. But you can you understand what I mean? All right. But let me show you now the power the power of 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 this workflow by using another another example. All right. So I have another file open here. This it's a a file with a uh, a blend file with a wine bottle and a model. Well, let me switch to render render preview. It's black, as I, as I mentioned. We start with black. And let's add our lights one by one. So this first light is very deliberate. You see this, this plane here is a simple gradient. And it's starting from the, the bright side here and going into the dark. Now, I line it up here so that it could start with this hard, hard line and fade into a gradient. All right? you get this really nice nice look it defines the shape of the bottle uh, to do that even more of course we add a light on the, on the other side but this time a little more fancy so when i enable this now you see what's happening here now here there's a, a, a gradient actually two gradients one here and one here but only using one plane and that is because of the power of this ultimate strip box so now i could use this as the gradient to the front here and also there's a separation so there's this edge light or rim light to create this separation from the background because it's black really really nice but there's a little problem we have this separation on this side but nothing on the left side so then this side is totally black although the label reaches across it looks it looks a bit weird so to fix that uh, we could we, we can add another plane but now instead of using another plane and adding to our scene uh, let me show you another technique you can simply add a background and enable a point light and add a color to it look really now with this ladies and gentlemen with just two planes and a point light we have created this highly professional looking outcome all right and even with this point light it creates that uh, sort of edge light there this red edge light it matches the cap it matches the overall theme uh, and this is how you use 
uh, the planes and this gradient technique of course with this ultimate strip box now this this is free to use it's available my, on my ground, ground route to download for free and of course if you're more advanced you could you could tweak this to suit or probably make it even more easier i don't know if you're more advanced you you, you will know what you're doing all right uh, but this is the power of this strip box and i wanted to share that with you uh, if you found this video interesting you could probably give it a like i have one more tip for you though before i go you saw before that i imported this strip box uh, node group by just by pressing shift a and it's here in my templates now usually if you have to import this node group you'll have to go to file append find the blend file open up the blend file go to node tree and then append it uh, but it's another way to do that a more efficient way in the next video above click on the video and i will show you how to do that way all right so i hope this video helped you some in some way or the other and i'll see you next time